Hi, and welcome to CNCF Signal Observability Updates. We have three people today. Simone Freli. I'm an observability software architect at Ericsson in Sweden and a senior adjunct lecturer at the University of Karlstad in Sweden and a SIG observability member. And I'm Richard, Prometheus team member, Open Metrics founder, SIG observability chair, and I work at Grafana Labs. Hello, my name is Bartek Plotka and I'm a principal software engineer at Red Hat. I am a Prometheus maintainer and co-author of Thanos product project. I'm SIG uh, Observability Tech Lead, and I also write a book about programming uh, with O'Reilly. So let's get started. What is all of this about? Well, SIG is a special interest group, most of you probably know this, and observability is fundamentally about making complex system understandable for humans. There's other definitions, but at, at, like the distilled version of this is, is usually this, that as systems become ever more complex, you need to actually be able to understand them as a human. And that's what we're working on. What this also means uh, as we are a SIG, and this is a group that we want to talk to you. This is also true for this talk, which is why we'll try and optimize towards keeping it relatively short to have as much Q&A and open discussion at the end of this slot. Looking at our charter, um, we are basically there to shepherd the observability space within, within uh, CNCF and help different projects, different end users, different vendors come into the space and interoperate nicely. Okay, so let's quickly recap what we did from really the beginning of the um, CNCF SIG observability creation, which was the summer last year. So um, the most important duties that we, uh, we we were told to do is the review of the projects that are being proposed to change the stage um, uh, of the CNCF, um, um, where they are in the in the in the CNCF landscape. So sandbox, incubated, or graduated stages. Um, so what we did, we submitted four uh, reviews for four projects. Uh, two of them, Cortec and Thanos, uh, end, ended up being incubated, and uh, we kind of spent a lot of time to review open metrics and open telemetry, uh, which are being passed, uh, and the review has been passed to the TOC. Um, and are awaiting their decision. Um, so that was kind of um, a, a large chunk of our work. But let's now look on, you know, our, you know, overall high level landscape of the observability in the CNCF. For better or worse, we still are, um, you know, within this old school model of observability free pillars uh, that we, we used to know, which is metrics tracing and, and logging. And the reason is that everything costs. Right. So, um, for example, metrics while adding less context that you might want to 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 have um, in terms of uh, you know unknown things that you you should observe, um, still are worth to have because of the just just the lowest cost for um, collecting those and and visualizing, um, and usually that's a start for your journey in terms of you know incident recovery and and finding out what was the root cause of that incident and what is the overall health of your system right so this is what you use for alerting and for immediate uh, triggers um or calculating slo um, reliably over time right and usually this is a starting point for the incident um duties and with the help of the logging uh, this is how you start your debugging investigations and typically you would end up kind of going into tracing only if needed um, to gather more crucial information about the you know the life cycle of the requests that happen sometimes between microserv multiple microservices in your cloud um, and um, you know that used to be our um, landscape, but it, it is right now uh, still the case. And uh, this is what, what people use on on, um, on production. But that's not at the end, right? Like there are things beyond that. And and we are, it was predicted, you know, already two years ago uh, that, you know, there will be more signals at the end. You know, something that clearly uh, has appeared is something like continuous profiling where you want to know your performance over time and you want to know uh, you know some historical performance you can compare things you can uh, compare in, you know kind of time spent um, CPU time spent per every function or, or memory allocations and this proven to be very 
very valuable and there are in the open source communities project that that allows you to do so for example comprof um, and at the end there might be more like crash dumps uh, this is something that um, i think is very valuable for for richie uh, and and i think it would be valuable for everyone but um, yeah this is some you know uh, million dollars idea that that we are still waiting to, to to have someone to implement it and within the cncf observability we also have some methods to activate more information from your system you would say that those are kind of the testing practices that are maybe a bit novel in the cloud native um, you know foundation and uh, this is essentially you know advanced testing like fuzzing or maybe something that i would say it's uh, fuzzing on production, right, which is essentially chaos monkey techniques, chaos, te uh, chaos testing, where you are randomly uh, triggering uh, fail uh, over scenarios uh, in the random parts of your system to ensure stability and and you know good incident reactions. So now, when we look on the you know, project landscape, we've seen some movement from the from the last year or from the even from the last KubeCon in. Uh, North America. So we, well, first of all, we uh, we noticed there are new incubated projects, Cortex and Thanos, and uh, that joined Open Tracing. Uh, nothing changed on graduation side. Fluent D, Yager, Prometheus are still very prominent and and still getting more adopted. And on the sandbox side, we see um, new project uh, Trickster, uh, which is. Um, you know, known from uh, amazing caching capabilities on, on top of Prometheus. Uh, we have open metrics and open telemetry, which were being proposed to get incubated. And we still have Chaos Mesh and Litmus, which are our, um, you know, Chaos testing um, projects we have here. So what's in our to-do list in the SIG observability? So we have some activities in progress, uh, mainly a white paper about observability. So all, all these stories and telling a little bit, um, talking about the foundations of observability, like, like Bartek shared with you previously, um, including other topics. And most importantly, we are including everybody in the SIG and inviting everybody to to contribute to this document because we see that there are people coming from different areas, from different industries, and they might have different references and also different input to contribute to this document. So our goal here is basically have a CNCF stamp or uh, let's say a base document when somebody comes to the CNCF and wants to learn more about observability, what it is and how do I get from zero to hero and what what exists in the landscape. This is at, at least one outcome we want to have in the SIG. The second document is uh, best current practices on tracing for from the end user perspective. So if you Remember the three pillars that Bartek talked about. Um, so we have logs, metrics, and we have distributed tracing. So in tracing, you usually need a little bit of um, education on the application development side. So you usually have to learn how to instrument your code and which information is relevant from your code to be distributed, with what is relevant to be propagated in a in a distributed context when you have several microservices talking to each other. So this is a little bit what we want to share in this document. We have a smaller set of people from the SIG contributing here. Um, usually people that already went on this path and learned from mistakes and learned best practices and they want to document and share that. So, and as a backlog, we have some activities, um, mainly webinars on observability um, and a white paper on overlap of observability and AI and ML. So there is an L missing in our slide, but we, we do want the machine and learning aspect of that. <laughs> so, um, and a little bit as input, so learning ways of working. Um, we are trying to understand or trying to 
to have a little bit of a way of of working that comes from let's say well understood or well operating communities such as the IETF if somebody is familiar with the internet engineering task force so how the, the process of coming from an idea, from a project, from, from code, to having a standard that you can share with um, other vendors, other companies, and other developers, and they all need to interoperate. So in, in the CNCF, or at least in the SIG, we are trying to think about like having a clear distinction, like for example, in the IRTF, in the IETF, what is experimental and more research oriented versus what is more engineering driven problems and implementations. Um, you can have implementations in the experimental and research oriented part as well, but trying to distinguish from, from where the, the, let's say the impulse is coming in the community is something, it, it, it's an engineering driven problem that's happening in a certain, industry in a certain part that maybe it's not the, the community that I'm coming from, the industry that I'm working for. Um, also have a little bit more of a process such as the, the request for comments in the ITF, so like a document that basically if you want to implement a protocol, you have a document that describes, or not one, but a set of them and these documents, there is a, a it's not that simple, so there is a, a process and sometimes a very long process to go from a proposal to have a standard at the end that somebody can follow and can uh, rely on that standard to be interoperable with another system. So how, how does the, yeah, how, how should we better implement that? How should we better work? Um, sh should we copy this this way of working? Should we implement something different? Is it interesting to have proposals first in a document, have people propose like having different implementations and trying to make their code to interoperate? And then based on this interoperation, you refine the documents um, up until the the stage where you have a, a solid, more solid document, and then you could have a, an RFC. So th these are some things um, um, we're thinking about. And one thing that, um, and of course, I'm not, not only trying to implement or, or copy what's working very well from other communities, but one thing that could work very well in the same way that works in the ITF is also the mediation between projects and vendors in a sense of um, the goal is to have a standard, the goal is to have interoperable standards and regardless of from which project you're coming from or from which vendor you're coming from, the goal here is to have code that's running and code that interoperates um, and is, let's say, vendor neutral. So create a community that's based on a technical problem that you need to solve, you need to implement, and it's less dependent on um, interests that could be coming from a community, from an industry, or from a particular vendor. Well, there are just three of us here, but all the work being carried out in the SIG uh, observability is there are lots of helping hands behind us. So the list of people are here and apologies if we forgot about someone, but we really try to include everyone here that participate in the calls and are active in, in the SIG. So thank you very much. And if you want to participate, if you got interested um, in what we shared here with you. So we have our fortnightly calls. Um, the link here is here in the in the slide. We have our repository. Everything that we talk about and we we share in the SIG is public. Uh, we have a Slack channel as well where people um, ask, come in, ask things and whatever, a mailing list. And if you have free time to spare and would like to share with us, <laughs> or no, <nah. laughs> 
So thanks everyone. Uh, come to the SIG observability and yeah, that's all from us for now. Thank you.